After the first episode on boots, we had a lot of viewers ask for a second round, including more brands, so we're about to find out if the $20 boots work just as well as those that cost almost $300. In the first test, we'll see which boots offer the best traction on dry ground as well as oily surfaces. Then we'll see which one offers the best protection against electrical hazards. We'll see which one offers the best toe protection. Finally, we'll find out which boots offer the best protection against sharp objects. So why spend $275 for a pair of boots when you can buy these Brahmas for under $25? Slip and oil resistant outsole. We're going to test that. Brahma claims their steel toe meets ASTM standards. The Brahma boots are made in China. The Brahma boots weigh 3.645 pounds. In the first test, let's see which brand of boots offers the best traction. The 2x4 moves freely back and forth and side to side. I'll place 90 pounds on the 2x4 and then place the 2x4 inside the boot. I'll apply a gradual controlled pulling force until the boot slips. To give every boot the best chance to succeed, I went ahead and cleaned the concrete with brake parts cleaner. For a budget boot, the Brahma performed well at 85 pounds. At a very good value price of only $34 is this AdTech brand, made of 100% leather. The manufacturer claims your oil-resistant rugged non-slip sole gives you ultimate traction, made in China. And the AdTech boots are quite a bit lighter than the Brahma's at 3.13 pounds. And the AdTech lost grip at 80 pounds or about 5 pounds less than the Brahma. At a price of only $40 is this Black Hammer brand, oil and slip resistant with anti-static heels. Designed in the UK, made for the world. Heat resistant soles, we're going to test that. The Black Hammer is made in China. The Black Hammer boots weigh 3.36 pounds. And the Black Hammer performed the best yet at 88.6 pounds to move into the lead over the Brahma. At a price of $50 is this Dunlop brand. Like all the boots we'll be testing, this pair of shoes has a steel toe. It claims to offer protection from electrical shock. The outsole is resistant to hot contact as well as fuel oil. The Dunlops are made in Indonesia. And the Dunlop shoes are pretty light at 2.715 pounds. Dunlop is known for making car tires. And the Dunlop shoes perform good enough to move into third place at 84 pounds. At a price of $57 is this Lauren Mern brand. It claims to be an indestructible construction work boot. We're about to find out. Anti-smashing, anti-puncture, anti-skid, and anti-static functions. The Lauren Mern is made in China. And the Lauren Merns are very light at only 2.71 pounds. And the Landmarns perform just about as well as the Black Hammers at 86.4 pounds to move into second place. At a price of $75 are these Herman Survivors. They claim that the boot is designed to protect in rough terrains. Includes 3M Fensolate insulation. The Herman Survivors are made in China. And the Herman Survivors are by far the heaviest yet at just over 5 pounds. And the Herman Survivors really struggled at only 54 pounds or about 34 pounds less than the Black Hammer boots. At a price of $111 is this Reebok brand. Instead of using a steel toe, these boots use a composite toe. The boots even include a quick access side zipper. Reebok claims these boots provide electrical shock protection. The Reeboks are made in China. And the Reeboks are pretty light at 3.255 pounds. And the Reebok boots move into the lead over the Black Hammers at 91 pounds. At a price of $127 is this Rockport brand. These boots are supposed to offer electrical hazard protection. Instead of using a steel toe, these boots have an XTR brand extra wide composite toe cap. The outsole of the boots are supposed to provide excellent traction. 100% leather. The Rockports are made in China. And the Rockports weigh 3.655 pounds. Just like the Herman Survivors, the Rockport boots really struggled at only 53.4 pounds to move into last place. At a price of $130 is this Carolina brand, 100% leather, oil and slip resisting rubber outsole. The Carolina boots are manufactured in Cambodia, and the Carolinas weigh 4.25 pounds. And the Carolina boots perform quite a bit better than the Herman Survivors and the Rockport boots, but 20 pounds below the Reeboks at 69.2 pounds. At a price of $205 is this Steel Blue brand. The boots are made from premium New Zealand cowhide leather. Includes a thermal plastic polyurethane sole. The toe cap is made from hardened steel for premium toe protection. Made in Indonesia. And the Steel Blues weigh just under 4 pounds. And the Steel Blue boots perform very well, making it to 88 pounds or just 3 pounds less than the Reeboks. At a price of $234 is this Redback brand. Aussie made, Aussie owned. Made of full grain leather. The rubber outsole is oil and acid resistant. Includes a steel toe. And the Redback boots are pretty light at 3.47 pounds. And the Redback boots lost grip at 70.2 pounds or about 20 pounds less than the Reeboks. At a price of $275, the most expensive boots we'll be testing are made by Red Wing. Red Wing claims their boots offer electrical hazard resistance. Heavy duty boot with steel toe protection. Includes a dual density urethane sole. The Red Wing boots are made in USA. The Red Wings weigh 4.855 pounds. And the Red Wing boots perform the best yet, making it to 92.4 pounds to take the first place position from the Reeboks. At a price of under $20 is this Emoji brand shoe, which will serve as our control. They claim their EVA sole offers a unique non-slip design and provides enough grip. Made in China. And the Emojis are very light at 0.765 pounds. And the Emoji shoe made it to 58 pounds before losing traction or almost 35 pounds less than the Red Wings. 
If you're looking for boots with the best ride traction, the Red Wings came out on top at 92.4 pounds. Three box finished in second at 91, Black Hammer 88.6, Steel Blue 88, and Landmurn 86.4 pounds. Let's see how the boots perform on a really slick surface. To make sure the surface is equally slick for all brands, I'll place each boot in standing 5W30 motor oil. On dry concrete, the Brahma began slipping at 85 pounds, but began slipping at only 27.8 on the oily concrete. The AdTech began slipping at 80 pounds on dry concrete and performed extremely well at 38.4 pounds on this test. And the Black Hammer did great on dry concrete at 88.6, but really struggled on this test at 26.2. And the Dunlop struggled even more than the Black Hammer, losing grip at only 23.8 pounds. And the Landmurn boots performed very well at 31.4 pounds, which is good enough to move into second place. The Herman Survivors only made it to 54 pounds on dry concrete, and they struggled in this test too at only 21.2 pounds. And the Reebok had great grip on dry concrete at 91 pounds, and they did great on this test as well at 31.4. The Rockport struggled on dry concrete at 53.4, and it struggled in this test too at only 23.2 pounds. The Carolina boot also struggled in this test at 23.6 pounds, or less than a pound better than the Rockport. The Steel Blue did great on dry concrete at 88 pounds, and it did great on this test too at 34.6. The Red Back also performed very well in this test, losing grip at 31.8 pounds. And the Red Wings performed above average, losing grip at 28.4 pounds. And the very affordable Emoji Shoe outperformed several of the boots at 26.2 pounds. If you're looking for boots that offer great traction on slick surfaces, the AdTech came out on top at 38.4 pounds. Steel Blue finished in second at 34.6, Redback 31.8, Landmurn and Reebok 31.4 pounds. Boot comfort is a big deal, so before destroying the boots, I walked about a half mile in each of the boots to provide a subjective comfort assessment. With every step, a person typically applies between 150 and 200 pounds of force on the outer sole of a boot. If the boots are poorly designed, what Walking over a pointed object like a rock can cause sore feet. So let's compare the strength of the sole next. And the bolt will press down on the center of the outer sole of the boot until it moves one inch downward. And the Brahma folded inward a full inch with only 91 pounds of force. Unfortunately, the padding on the inside of the Brahma boots is very minimal. After wearing the boots for a half a mile, including walking over some rocks, I found the Brahmas to be very uncomfortable. The Brahmas also have a blocked heel. Definitely not a problem for a person who takes short, choppy steps, but it doesn't offer a natural heel-to-toe motion when taking long strides. And the AdTech offers more outer sole strength compared to the Brahmas at 112 pounds. The Brahmas are on the left and the AdTechs are on the right. The rounded heel on the AdTech really helps the heel-to-toe motion when taking longer strides. However, the AdTech just doesn't seem to have enough padding and the boots are pretty uncomfortable. The Black Hammer has a steel plate in the sole which gives it a lot of strength, but that does impact the comfort. However, it is much more comfortable when walking over sharp objects like rocks compared to the Brahma and the AdTech. However, the boots definitely could use some more padding. And the Dunlop folded inward at only 112 pounds, the same as the AdTech. While the Dunlops do look pretty comfortable like tennis shoes, unfortunately, they just aren't too comfortable and could use some more padding. And the Lauren Bird made it to 113 pounds or one pound better than the Dunlop. It does have a lot better padding than the previous brands, and it's the most comfortable boot yet. The insole is pretty thin. And the Herman Survivors have a very thick sole and perform better than average at 165 pounds. They're heavy boots with a blocked heel, so not the most comfortable for those with longer strides. However, the insole offers pretty good padding. And the Reebok boots are very light, but they still perform very well in this test at 182 pounds. The Reeboks have a very athletic look and feel to them with a natural heel-to-toe motion. However, the Herman Survivors does seem to have a little bit more comfortable insole. And the Rockport boot performed even better than the Reebok at 199 pounds. And the Rockport's insoles are a little bit more comfortable compared to the Reeboks. And the Carolinas don't have a steel plate in the sole, but they perform just about as well at 256 pounds to move into second place. And the Carolinas do have pretty good padding throughout, however, the insole is pretty thin. And the Steel Blue performed very well, making it to 211 pounds at one inch of compression. And the Steel Blue offers a natural heel-to-toe stride. After a half mile of use, I found the Steel Blues to offer a very natural heel-to-toe stride in the most comfortable insole yet. And the Redback made it to 235 pounds, which is good enough to move into third place behind the Steel Blue. And the Red Back is even more comfortable than the Steel Blue with a very high quality insole. And the Red Wing moves into the lead at a very impressive 304 pounds. Very good foot comfort and protection with the Red Wing boots. After walking a half mile in the Red Wings, the biggest drawback is that they weigh almost 5 pounds. But then again, they're built to last. So the Red Wings came out on top at 304 pounds. The Black Hammer finished in second at 286, Carolina 256, Red Back 235, and Steel Blue 211. Pounds. I'll offer a lot more detailed information regarding boot comfort near the end of the video. Let's compare the puncture resistance of the boots using a 16-penny nail. And it only took 21 pounds to puncture the Brahma sole. 
And the Attack performed much better than the Brahma at 66 pounds. The Black Hammer has a steel plate in the sole, and the shoe did an amazing job at over 300 pounds, and the nail did not puncture the boot. And the Dunlop shoe performed well at 89 pounds, or the best of the boots without a steel lining. And the Lauren Mern moved ahead of the Dunlop at 106 pounds, which is good enough for second place. And the Herman Survivors only made it to 71 pounds, or 37 pounds less than the Lauren Mern's. And the Reeboks once again performed very well at 97 pounds, and moved into third place behind the Lauren Mern's. And the Rockport gave up early at only 35 pounds. And the Carolinas have a pretty thick sole, and they made it to 76 pounds. And the Steel Blue gave up a little bit early at 52 pounds. The Red Becks barely edged out the Carolinas at 77 pounds. And the Red Wings performed very well at 97 pounds to move into a two-way tie for third place with the Reeboks. And the Emoji just doesn't offer very good sharp object protection at just 14 pounds. If you're looking for a boot that offers great foot protection from sharp objects, the Black Hammer came out on top without getting punctured at over 300 pounds. The Lauren Merns finished in second at 106 pounds, and the Reeboks and Red Wings, 97 pounds. A while back, I had a sharp object puncture the top of a boot and caused a foot injury. So let's test that next. And the Brahmas once again gave up early at only 10 pounds. And the Attack performed quite a bit better than the Brahma at 49 pounds. And the nail punctured the black hammer at 39 pounds, which is good enough to move into the second position. And the Dunlop takes over the second place position at 43 pounds. And the Larnmern struggled a little bit on this test at 25 pounds. The Herman Survivor's boot is just one pound short of tying the Adtech for first at 48 pounds. And the Reebok takes the lead at 59 pounds or 10 pounds better than the Adtech. And the Rockport takes the lead from the Reebok at 66 pounds. The Carolina boot looks pretty durable, but the nail punctured the leather at 35 pounds. And the Steel Blue performed the same as the Carolina boot at 35 pounds. And the Redback moves into second place behind the Rockport at 61 pounds. And the Red Wings performed very well at 50 pounds. When it comes to top of foot protection from sharp objects, the Rockport came out on top at 66 pounds. Redback finished in second at 61, Reebok 59, and Red Wing 50 pounds. Let's see how the boots hold up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The test will last right at one minute. No visible smoke or sizzling from the Brahma. And the Brahma's held up really well with only a small amount of damage. And the AdTech was smoking and sizzling during the test. Unfortunately, the AdTech boots did not hold up very well to the heat. And the Black Hammer boots held up just fine. No visible damage. And the Dunlops are definitely designed to handle the heat. No visible damage. And the Larnmorns did a great job of withstanding the heat. And the Herman Survivors held up just fine. And the Reeboks are well designed to withstand the heat. And the Rockports held up just fine without any visible damage. Some visible smoke from the Carolinas, but no visible damage. And the Steel Blue was smoking and sizzling during the test. And the Steel Blues just did not like the heat. There's quite a bit of damage. And the Red Backs were sizzling pretty badly and experienced quite a bit of damage. Unfortunately, the Red Wings did experience some damage, but not quite as much as the Red Backs. And the Emoji Shoe held up just fine with no visible damage. Providing a damage assessment rating for the boots is subjective, but most of the brands receive the highest possible rating of one for no visible damage. Let's remove the toe section from each boot and then see how much toe protection they offer. And the Brahmas have a small amount of padding and the rubber sole looks pretty flimsy. To meet the official testing standards, a steel toe is supposed to withstand 2,500 pounds of force, leaving a half inch of clearance. And the Brahma easily passed the test. At 5,000 pounds, the carrots are getting nervous, but they're still just fine. And the metal toe plate did experience quite a bit of bending, but it did pass the test. And the AdTech sole is a little bit more robust than the Brahma's, but there's just not much there for padding. And the AdTech easily passed the 2,500 pound standard. And the carrots are still in one piece at 5,000 pounds. The toe plate on the Brahma is on the left and the AdTech is on the right. And the AdTech experienced a lot less damage. And it took quite a bit of effort to cut through the black hammer with the steel plate in the sole. And the black hammer easily passed the 2,500 pound standard. However, the carrots did experience a little bit of pressure at 5,000 pounds, but they survived without injury. And the metal toe plate in the black hammer looks the best so far, holding very close to its original shape. The Dunlops have a shoe insert, a piece of fabric to offer a little padding, and then the rubber outsole, which is pretty thin. And the Dunlop easily passed a 2,500 pound testing standard, but 5,000 pounds was definitely right at the max. The carrots were squeezed, but no visible fractures, and the metal toe plate is a little bit bent. And the Larnmern has a shoe insert, fabric beneath the insert, a rubber sole, and boot tread that's glued to the rubber sole. And the Larnmern held up just fine at 2,500 pounds, and it survived to 5,000 pounds as well. However, the metal toe plate does have a small bend. And the Herman Survivors have an insert, a couple layers of fabric or padding, and the rubber sole. And the Herman Survivors easily handled the 2,500 pounds and easily survived the 5,000 thousand pound load. And the metal toe plate on the Herman Survivors is still in great shape. And the Reeboks are well designed for foot comfort with the insert as well as the padding on top of the rubber sole. No problem with 2,500 pounds, but 3,600 pounds is all the Reeboks could handle before becoming a hazard for the carrots. And 5,000 pounds caused injury to the carrots. And the composite toe cap did experience a lot of damage. A shoe insert, some padding, and a pretty substantial rubber sole on the rock ports. 
And the rock port's mitted to 2,600 pounds, but that's pretty much the limit. I tried to reach 5,000 pounds, but the toe plate completely collapsed before I could get there. And the composite toe cap on the rock port's broke in a couple of areas. And there's a shoe insert, some padding, and some pretty thick rubber on the Carolina boot. And the Carolina easily withstood 2,500 pounds, and it also did just fine at 5,000 pounds. However, the metal toe plate is a little bit bent. And the steel blues offer quite a bit of padding and foot support compared to the less expensive boots. And the carrots look like they're getting a lot of pressure at 2,500 pounds and getting crushed at 5,000 pounds, but there is a lot of padding. The metal toe plate did become bent pretty badly during the test. Just like the steel blue, the red back is well designed for foot comfort with a nice insert as well as a generous amount of padding. And the carrots are feeling pretty snug at 2,500 pounds, but the red back easily passed the test. At 5,000 pounds, the carrots were pressed into the padding, but they survived without injury. The metal toe plate did become bent during the test. The Red Wing is definitely designed to ensure user comfort with a high quality shoe insert as well as a generous amount of padding. At 2,500 pounds, there's still a lot of space between the toe cap and the carrots. At 5,000 pounds, there's plenty of wiggle room for the carrots. And the metal toe plate does have a small bend, but it held up really well overall. All of the boots passed the 2,500 pound test just fine. The boots with the metal toe plates made it to 5,000 pounds without crushing the carrots. Unfortunately, the boots with the composite toe caps didn't perform quite as well. Before we destroy the other boot, let's first test electric shock protection. I'll be using an electric fence charger that delivers very close to 8,300 volts. Let's first place the wire that's connected to the bottom of the 2x4 directly onto the steel plate. Wow, that's a pretty bad shock. The electric fence charger display dropped from a reading of 15 to 0, indicating that it's completely grounded. I'll place the 2x4 into the boot and we'll measure the voltage drop caused by the current passing through the boot and grounding out on the steel plate. We'll use the boots that have not been exposed to oil. When it was completely grounded out, the fence charger dropped to 0, but with the electricity passing through the Brahmas, the charger is reading 13.6 to 13.7. And the Brahmas are at 7,450 volts. And the AdTech performed a little bit better than the Brahmas at 7,500 volts. And the the steel plate in the bottom of the black hammer seems to be hurting just a little. 7,000 volts for the black hammer. And the Dunlops performed just as well as the Adtex at 7,500 volts. And the Larnmerns performed by far the best yet at 7,950 volts or about 450 volts better than the Dunlop and the Adtech. And the Herman Survivors move into second place at 7,550 volts. And the Reeboks are right at 7,300 volts. And the Rockports experienced the most voltage drop yet at 4,700 volts. And the Carolina boot is a little bit better than average at 7,550 volts. And the Steel Blues are right at 7,300 volts. And the Red Back is also right at 7,300 volts. And the Red Wing is a little bit lower than average at 7,150 volts. And the emoji actually didn't do too bad at 7,350 volts. In case you're wondering, none of the boots will prevent a person from getting shocked if they touch an electric fence. However, all of the boots provide some level of benefit with alarm burns coming out on top at 7,950 volts. Herman Survivors in Carolina, 7,550, and AdTech and Dunlop, 7,500 volts. Let's test the falling object toe protection next using this large piece of railroad which weighs very close to 75 pounds. I'll drop the iron from 23 inches above the concrete or approximately 20 inches above the top of the boot. Let's see if the carrot survives unharmed when we drop the iron on the Emoji brand shoe first. And things did not go so well for the Emoji with the carrot completely destroyed. And the Brahma did protect the carrot just fine, but the toe plate is now bent. Just like the Brahma, the AdTech protected the carrot, but the toe cap is now bent. With the black hammer, the toe cap did quite a bit better and did not compress nearly as much as the Brahma or the AdTech. The toe cap did experience an extremely small bend. And the Dunlop provided more than adequate strength to protect the carrot from the impact, but the toe plate is now bent. And the Lauren Merns performed about the same as the Dunlops, providing good protection. However, the toe cap is now bent. And the Herman Survivors performed well with some toe cap compression, but it did experience a small bend. And the composite toe cap on the Reebok compressed quite a bit from the blow, but it provided adequate protection. No visible damage to the Reebok. Just like the Reebok, the composite toe cap on the Rockport did compress quite a bit, but the carrot pulled through just fine. No visible damage to the Rockport. And the Carolina compressed a lot less than the Reebok in the Rockport. However, there is a small bend in the toe cap. And the Steel Blue has a steel toe cap and it did compress quite a bit. No harm to the carrot, but the toe cap is bent pretty badly. And the red back provided plenty of protection against the impact, but the toe cap is bent almost as badly as the steel blue. And the Red Wing seem unfazed by the impact. The Red Wing definitely seems to have held up better than all the other brands. After the previous episode on boots, a lot of viewers requested more information on boot comfort. So I wore each of the boots about a half a mile. If you walk over uneven surfaces or surfaces with sharp objects such as rocks, the Red Wings do an amazing job protecting the feet with the best possible rating of 1. Steel Blue and Red Beck also did very well with the rating of 1.5. If you take long strides, a boot that offers a natural walking motion from heel to toe can really make a big difference. None of the boots received the highest possible rating of 1 but the Reebok, Redback, and Red Wing all received a rating of 2. 
Sole padding or the amount of cushioning can really help you avoid foot, knee, and back pain. Once again, the red back and the red wings offer the best cushioning. The amount of padding surrounding the sides and the top of the feet can also make a big difference regarding comfort. And the red wings seem to offer the most comfort. The red back and the steel blues also ranked very well. Taking the average across all four categories, the red wing came out on top, but the red back and the steel blue also performed very well. If one includes the subjective categories for comfort and damage caused by heat exposure, the red wings had the highest average finish of 2.8. Reebok had an average finish of 3.7, and Redback 3.9. For a $40 boot, the Black Hammer performed well at 4.2 and Lauren Mern 4.3. If one removes the two subjective categories, the order of the top five stays the same. One area that I wish I could test is longevity. For example, the build construction on a boot like the Steel Blue is far superior than the Black Hammer and the Larn Merns, but the Steel Blue just didn't perform as well as the Black Hammer and the Larn Merns on some of the tests. If you like another showdown on boots, please let me know what type of boots you like tested and also what brands you'd like to see tested as well. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.